So you've just got your first mountain bike or maybe a new bike that's in need of an upgrade, but where do you start? You really wanna get the most performance for your money and get something that really makes a big difference to your bike. This could be the addition of a dropper post to help get that saddle out of the way or a new pair of tires to really suit the terrain you're riding day in, day out. There are quite a few ways to tweak out a bit more performance from your bike. So here are five essential upgrades for your new bike. The only part that touches the ground, tires are so important and often an overlooked and very simple upgrade. As far as price for performance goes, there's no question that tires stand above as the top contender. Make them tubeless and you've doubled that upgrade. It's important to get the right tires for the condition you're riding in. So wet weather tires in very dry, dusty conditions are not gonna perform well. Uh, and the same goes for having a really dry tire and wet conditions, you're gonna be slip and sliding all over over the place. So make sure you get the right tire for your terrain. But if you get it right, the performance of your bike is gonna go skyrocketing up. If you wanna save weight on your bike, then get new wheels. They can make a dramatic difference to how your bike feels, second only to tires, really. It's one of the pricier upgrades you can do, but the benefits are huge. You'll probably save a lot of weight, upwards of an entire kilogram at times. But if you're not a weight-saving aficionado, chances are value and durability over featherweight efficiency is more important. In this case, a new pair of wheels is still a fantastic upgrade. Having a pair, a pair of wheels that you can really throw down a mountain and bash through some rocks without being worried if they explode is a wonderful thing, allowing you to really enjoy riding your bike and focus on the task at hand. Generally speaking, wheel upgrades can be kind of costly. They range from like £350 for an economic wheel set, um, but you can spend a monumental £3,000 if you want draw-worthy carbon hoops. Uh, but but listen to this, as Keith Bontrager says, strong, light, cheap. Pick two of those and it's perfectly describing the situation of what you want to think about when it comes to wheels. Strong, light, cheap. If your bike doesn't come with a dropper post, then it should without doubt be on your shortlist for an upgrade. We've even put it ahead of new forks or even a new drivetrain. Uh, it's simple but amazing to be able to get your saddle out of the way or, or, or up into a climbing position just at the touch of a button. It, it's a game changer and it makes your bike feel totally different. If you haven't tried one, you must. They range from 80 mils of travel to 200 mils, uh, but most drive a 125 or 150 mils uh, in travel. The price, they range from about 120 pound for a basic post that will do the job, all the way up to 800 pound for RockShox's new Axis wireless dropper, which is absolutely fantastic. But don't get me wrong, there's all sorts of upgrades you can add to your bike, but a dropper post has got to be one of them. Your bike might have come with narrow handlebar and quite a long stem. While this may have been the trend a few years ago, even cross-country bikes are now changing those ways and going for a shorter stem and a very wide handlebar combo. Generally speaking, we seldom recommend having a stem over 60 mil long and handlebars less than 740 mil wide, which is a big change from mountain biking back in its early days. It just provides so much more control through the direct steering, the wide or handlebar bars open up your chest and you can breathe much easier on the climbs and that makes a huge difference it's not something you would necessarily think about beforehand oftentimes the way to find the best width of handlebars is uh, by doing some push-ups that will really give you a good idea of how wide you need your bars uh, and it also gives you an idea of how much control you'll have over the bike because you're constantly doing push-ups when you're out on your bike so it's the same riding position that you'll be reflecting so check that out see how wide you want to go and make that change. It's a big difference. Then what about the materials? What the bar is made from? Do you go with carbon or alloy bars? Alloy is certainly cheaper, but carbon is lighter and often can be more comfortable, especially when it comes to absorbing those vibrations when you're out on the trail, and that can reduce arm pump dramatically. You're looking at between 50 pound to 200 pound for a new handlebar, more or less, but it's a great upgrade and make a big difference to how your bike feels. 
When you buy a new bike, you really wanna make it your own. And the best way to do that is to change all the contact points. Now, what I mean by that is the three places you contact the bike, it's the, it's the grips, it's the, it's the pedals, and it's the saddle, very simple really. These all need to feel good and comfortable, otherwise your bike won't feel good and comfortable. Just like the tires are the only thing that touches the ground, the contact points are the only place that you touch the bike, so they are critical. Proper grips feel good, yes, but they also help reduce the chance of arm pump or cramped hands. Some grips have different rubber diameter to suit different size hands, or the amount of feedback from the bars you want to feel. Other grips have different diameters from one side of the grip to the other, like these Ergon GA2 grips, uh, we use these actually here. That contour to your hands and the narrower on the inside makes a big difference. Find some that work for you. Uh, it's all about going in the shop and actually getting your hands on these grips because they can make a huge difference to how you ride your bike and the comfort that you've got whilst doing it. Now what about the pedals? Now a solid pair of flat pedals will keep your feet from slipping in rough terrains while clipping pedals ensure you're connected at all times. Good pedals are a solid investment and you might find that you actually move them from bike to bike once you're comfortable. Making sure your feet are always where they should be uh, it feels great and you don't like the feeling of opposite to that. We usually suggest going for flats when just starting out as they are often helpful with learning proper techniques like bunny hopping uh, and your foot position. But clips are great for feeling connected to the bike and getting a really efficient pedal stroke going when you're out on those cross country rides. Both kinds of pedals are priced similarly ranging from £30 to up to £180. Fill your boots, can't go wrong with a great set of pedals. If you plan on riding your bike for a few hours at a time, it is super important to get the right saddle that fits you correctly. Everyone's lower bits are shaped, uh, how should we say this, slightly differently. Um, one saddle might be the bee's knees for one person, but shocking for another. So if possible, try different saddles to find one that fits your um, undercarriage just right. Many shops will have sit bone measuring tools that can help narrow down the options, so maybe try that out. It's not something you would come to first off, but if you think about it, it's a great idea. Saddles can go for as little as £40, but for as much as £250 for those carbon and titanium numbers. Trust us, finding the right saddle can be the difference between a great all-day epic and a day you'd rather forget. So start saving for one of these upgrades for a definite way to improve your bike riding experience. If you'd like to improve some riding skills then head over to this video that's all about just that and don't forget to subscribe to GMBM by hitting the globe here and lastly before you go give us a thumbs up like because it will help more people see this video and get some great upgrades for their bike too. See you next time.